let's talk about outlining. OK, so here's a sample outline. It ended up on more than one page. All right, our definition for an outline, your, your intention, you're narrowing down your ideas, you're putting them in order. Here we go. OK, so introduction. We talked about this a little bit when we talked about the purpose of an opening paragraph. Now, your introduction can be more than one paragraph. It can be more than one. But here's an idea. Good, typical structure to, um, to have an essay. You summarize the text. This could be what um, Lewis wrote about. You can have a thesis statement like this, which we looked at earlier. A. David Lewis. Ooh, I missed an A. Um, in Guardians of the Galaxy, and Fall of the Classic Hero makes a convoluted argument. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy satirizes Joseph Campbell's bottom of theory. That's the thesis statement. Everything that I say from this point on has to support this. This is why we figure out the thesis statement before the outline, so that it's clear in our head what we're trying to do. So the introduction helps support this. Any body paragraphs should help to support this. The conclusion should help to support this. If there's anything in here that doesn't help to support the thesis statement, it doesn't belong in the paper. Let me give you a bad example. Okay, let's say you've got a glass of water. I just have a hand here, no glass of water. But water, when it's clean, is clear. You can see through it. Like, literally, you can look through it, and the only distortion you're really going to see is uh, the glass itself, right? As it bends and refracts light and whatever. But let's say you add something that doesn't belong in the water, something that's extra, like dirt right and you mix it up and there's dirt throughout the whole thing now you've changed the color of the water and if you add enough you can't even see through the water that's the problem with adding things that don't belong in an essay if it doesn't help you to clearly make your argument your argument will not be made clearly it won't be clear it'll be mud muddy muddy mud in the water and you can't see what's going on it will be convoluted, perhaps, right? This is why it's important to not settle for using details in your paper that don't support your argument, just because you might think it's clever, or it's a good idea. If it doesn't make your point, don't do it. Take the time to figure out how to make your point effectively. Outlining is a good stage to help you to do that. Okay, so moving on. So I came up with this sample. Um, body paragraphs, how many should you have? as many as it takes. Uh, a good, you know, three to five ratio should be good, right? The, this is based on the structure of a standard five paragraph, five section essay. Beginning is your introduction. You've got the body, might be three different parts, paragraphs, whatever. And then the conclusion is its own. Okay, what I decided is, well, the first thing I have to do is, before I can talk about Lewis's claim about Hero with a Thousand Faces and the Monomyth, I need to say what it is. Otherwise, it's going to be confusing. And in fact, that's one thing that Lewis does. He stops and he explains where this idea of the monomyth comes from. And he summarizes Campbell. And that comes from this book, Hero with a Thousand Faces, by Joseph Campbell, published in 1949. Apparently, this is a 1980 printing. And you'll notice. See that guy there? That's Luke Skywalker. And that's because um, George Lucas literally met with Joseph Campbell to talk about Star Wars before he made it because he wanted to use this idea of the monomyth, right? I'm not going to get into the meat and potatoes of the monomyth, but this is, the, this is where the idea comes from. Okay, so we have our guy, Lewis is talking about how this movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, uses something from this book. So you kind of need to know all three of them, right? So you may want to start with something like background. And then I can start talking about what Lewis does. Maybe this is a, a next section. And maybe my topic sentence is a claim. A claim like, Lewis begins his essay by explaining how Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy follows Joseph's monomyth. Now, I say that's a claim, but there's nothing really debatable about it. It's just a summary, and that's probably okay. And I pulled for my outline an example of from the essay, and in my outline, 
I include the citation because if you are using quotes and you are not citing them at the time that you are doing them, you are adding more time and more, more work to your paper because you're either going to write a paper without citations, and if I'm your teacher, uh, we're gonna look at this and we're like, there's no citations, go add your citations. And then you're gonna go back and you're gonna have to find them, and that's when more work happens. But if you know that you're gonna use this quote, you write it down and you immediately just put your in-text citation, real simple. Author's last name, page number, boom, you're done. Not only do you look really smart because you cited it, but two, you don't have to go find that again. You're done, you're ready to move on. Okay, so because this is a reader response essay, I don't need to just summarize what the author did. I need to make some commentary about it. So maybe I make an argument. Uh, I put something into my outline here. I was offended because it seemed like Lewis didn't understand the monomyth at all. One of the first things he does in this essay that I'm using as an example is he starts talking about, um, well, it's this quote right here. You already know, Mr. Campbell. Oh, that's right. I'd forgotten. You beat the stuffing out of his heroic monomyth in your movie this year. So he's hypothetically talking to the characters of the movie as if they stole what they do from this book. And this is where I take offense. Because the point of this book is not that he came up with an idea. He just put a word, monomyth, onto something he observed of thousands of years of myths and legends and texts. He simply recognized a pattern in history. So to think that that pattern wouldn't show up in a future movie shows one, you don't get this, and two, to attribute the monomyth to this guy, again, shows that you don't understand it because this guy didn't come up with it. His whole point is like, this goes back forever. So you show all these ancient images and pictures. We've got, I don't know, Alexander the Great and other people, right? It's like a guy in the 1940s didn't come up with this. This has been around a long time. So again, it already seems from like the second or third paragraph, Lewis is a little confused on what he's talking about. And that's my response. So because this is reader response, I should talk about it. Now, what is extra confusing is as the argument continues towards the end of the essay, Lewis is like, you know what? Actually, maybe the whole thing is just satire. He's not, they're not beating, what's it say? You beat the stuffing out of the hero, heroic monomyth. Actually, maybe what they're really doing is making fun of it. If audiences step back a bit, it's easier to see how Guardians of the Galaxy might be a satire of the classic hero tradition. Ah, see, here's the problem. You know how we talked about style earlier and essays? Um, the thesis you introduce early, and this isn't exactly stated as the thesis, but the argument that you make early is not your main point. You led the reader in the wrong direction. Now, are you doing it for creative effect? Maybe, but it's kind of misguided to begin with because it shows one, and this is again my response. I don't think you really understand this book, and two, that wasn't your point at all. So the actual argument isn't till the very end of the essay when this shows up. And that's where I'm like, uh, when I put my response, I'm a little confused why he didn't just lead with this. Because why can't your thesis be James Gunn, because he never mentions the person who wrote and directed the movie. And if you're talking about a story and not talking about the writer, it's a little confusing to me why you would do that, but Lewis doesn't. So instead of saying James Gunn satirizes, you know, the hero with a thousand faces to subvert the audience expectation, if that's your point, say that. Say it up front and then just explain it. But that's not what he does. He talks to the characters. He doesn't talk about the writer. He says they're beating up this thing. He doesn't completely understand it. And he doesn't make his point till the end, which this is a fine point. This could be a good thesis, but that's not what your essay argues. I think you just wanted to talk about movies and you didn't get to your idea till the end. 
So again, something that's structured a little bit weird, whatever, right? So not all essays are bad examples. This is one that just got me motivated to write about it. Okay, now you're at the conclusion. Restate your thesis, because you want to be very clear what you're trying to say. And again, the thesis is, it's convoluted. It's kind of all over the place. You summarize your best evidence, maybe a quote, summary, and then you just end with final thoughts. So this is a detailed outline. Honestly, I would like this to be more detailed than what I'm showing you right now. Why would I like that more? Because then when I move to the next step of actually writing the essay, I could, uh, there's less to figure out because I figured it out when it was in list form as an outline than when I was writing it later. And this is something I also encourage my students to do is like, why not just write it in list form and then you take away the bullets and you've got an essay. Because that's really important. It's helpful.